Welcome to the Terran Space Academy. This is a space brief. We appreciate everyone who has studied our courses and your feedback and suggestions are very important to us. If you would like to help make sure we can continue preparing you for a future in the space industry, our Patreon page is active at www.patreon.com slash Terran Space Academy. I went with military ranks just to have fun. I know that I left out Lieutenant Junior Grade and I don't care. Now don't forget to like and subscribe. We are working to bring you another in-depth course. While it is being prepared, we want to have a quick discussion on the death of Apollo. No, not that Apollo. Or that one. This one. What killed the Apollo program? I have heard many suggestions. My more liberal friends will say it was that warmonger Nixon needing money for the Vietnam War. He destroyed one of humanity's greatest achievements. My conservative friends will say no, it was canceled to pay for all those wasteful social programs the Democrats wanted. As an independent, I often find myself trying to find a middle ground. These days, if you say you don't want children to die from preventable illness, one side screams communist. Then if you would rather not be arrested for hurting someone's feelings, the other side screams fascist. I always think that if these people could spend a few days in Germany in the 1930s or perhaps Russia in the 1950s, they would not be so quick to throw those words around. But that aside, what did kill Apollo? Why did the country that turned national power into an art form destroy a launch system capable of getting 125 tons into orbit? Why? If the concerns were military, could they not have assembled orbital battle stations over the enemy and dominated everything from space? Why not put a colony on the moon and mine the titanium for building even more space infrastructure? The United States would have dominated the world for at least two centuries instead of only part of one. The reasons are historical. America had come through World War I determined to avoid all war and had become isolationist. The United States at that time was a nation of farmers and ranked number 13 in military power. Britain ruled the earth. When World War II started, Americans did not feel that it was our fight. We believed that our geographical defenses, two massive oceans, would protect us. When Pearl Harbor was attacked, that all changed. We built equipment to help the Russians and the British fight because none of our factories had been bombed. Americans are often taught that the United States defeated Nazi Germany. That is not quite accurate. It's like waiting until Mike Tyson has fought a hundred other boxers, then knocking him out and bragging. Russia had fielded 35 million fighters, 16 million of whom gave their lives on the battlefield. Most of the European countries had exhausted their militaries and been defeated, except Britain. Britain also had the English Channel to keep tanks from coming over easily and with constant resupply from the United States was able to hold out. The United States did not join the war until quite late in the game, but definitely turned the tide, leading to the fall of Hitler's Reich. General Eisenhower became President Eisenhower and, seeing the massive business interests that had developed in the U.S. to profit off warfare, gave a warning in his most remembered speech. He said, Every gun that is made, every warship launched, every rocket fired, signifies, in the final sense, a theft from those who hunger and are not fed, those who are cold and are not clothed. This world in arms is not spending money alone. It is spending the sweat of its laborers, the genius of its scientists, the hopes of its children. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this a modern brick school in more than 30 cities. It is two electric power plants, each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, fully equipped hospitals. It is some 50 miles of concrete pavement. We pay for a single fighter with a half million bushels of wheat. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. This is not a way of life at all, in any true sense. Under the cloud of threatening war, it is humanity hanging from a cross of iron. In usual American fashion, we completely ignored him. 
Winston Churchill once said, you can always trust the Americans to do the right thing once they've exhausted all other possibilities. If, after World War I, America had become isolationist, after World War II, it became expansionist. War was much better if you fought it on someone else's land. The massive war industry was always looking for a reason to expend ordnance, and the CIA had no problem finding opportunities for them to test out the new stuff. Now in 1970, the military budget was $344 billion for that year alone. The entire Apollo program from start to finish cost $28 billion over 13 years. That's only $2.15 billion per year. Nothing compared to the military budget. Less than 1% in fact. And social program spending increased by only $4.5 billion in 1972. Only 1.3% 1 of the military budget. So what killed Apollo? And why? You will find that political parties in America try to blame every problem on the current administration if it is the opposite party, or the previous administration if your guy is in office. Anything they try to accomplish we must kill, or the other side might succeed in getting something good done, and we can't have that. The United States of America gave up the greatest space launch system ever built to this day because Nixon's feelings were hurt when he was defeated by Kennedy. He hated Kennedy. Now, Kennedy had died in office and the American people would not have tolerated the cancellation of Apollo before beating the Soviets to the moon. But once we had, everything could be blamed on Apollo. Losing the war? It's that Apollo program taking so much money. Can't afford housing? It's that stupid moon program dreamed up by the Democrats. As soon as it was politically possible, Nixon killed Apollo. Taking the last three rockets meant for Apollo 18, 19, and 20 and hanging their corpses for display in Alabama, Texas, and Florida. Human pettiness killed Apollo. And all of humanity has suffered that loss. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Patreon is active now. And don't forget to make a list of educational YouTube sites that can really keep you up to date. I recommend To the Future with Chi Xuan and Sebastian. They will keep you up to date on space technology and other advances in technology that could affect space colonization. I also recommend The Angry Astronaut. He might be angry, but he puts out some excellent videos on specific subjects related to space exploration. Take care and be safe.